without further ado, this is a very special episode. Every couple of episodes, I like to bring you guys, the listeners, informative things. Um, not necessarily what you would call like big news kind of things, but, but, but informative stuff. But things that can help you in your life. Many of you are small business owners that listen. Many of you are thinking about becoming small business owners. And many of you are Christians that listen to this. And even if you're not, do not turn off the episode yet. Let us get through the thing because I really think you're going to like this. These are some very good friends of mine, Riley and Christian, and they are a part of a group called King's Council. And before you turn it off, no, it's not some crusade type thing or anything like that. No, these guys are actually... Putting in discipleship to Christian entrepreneurs to further their business so they then can be generous and give back to the kingdom of God all at the same time, which I think is absolutely fascinating. And I am super excited to have them on so they can explain what all this stuff is. And so without further ado, uh, Riley, Christian, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, What's up, sir. brother? <laughs> Chris is like, yeah, we've already done this. <laughs> we already sound checked, Graham. Why are you why are you talking to us like we're stupid? All right. <laughs> okay, guys. I know we've done this once before, and I've got to uh, Zach's already over there looking at me. I got to say we love producer Zach, but we have a lot of new equipment in here. And in the midst of putting all the equipment together, we lost the original audio of our conversation, which I think was the Lord because the Lord wanted us to do I it like again. That. I like and, that. Oh, I bet you do like that, Zach. <laughs> anyway, all right. Wasn't anyway, my fault. So, so we're going to start it the exact same way we did last time, guys. Riley or Christian, whoever wants to go, I'll let you guys fight amongst yourselves or arm wrestle. Um, explain to us how something like a King's Council came to be. Riley, you're a successful entrepreneur. Christian, so are you. What what led you guys, what led to the creation of this idea of the King's Council? Yeah, man. Uh, this ultimately was really birthed out of just this overwhelming feeling of unfulfillment, right? As you mentioned, um, an entrepreneur uh, have, you know, done somewhat well, I would say, uh, in the, you know, the financial uh, arena. And uh, just how many know, like, if you're listening to this and it's, there's this moment in time where you just realize that it's not always about money, um, unless, yeah. you know, unless you never have enough of it, of course, then it always becomes about money. Um, but I was a part of a number of different masterminds and business groups that um, were great. There, there was great community to be a part of those, but I knew that there was just something more. I thought, man, am I just, was I just made to just create another business or, or start another company? And I just had this terrible feeling of unfulfillment in my life. And ultimately, uh, mm -hmm. When I looked, and I looked across kind of you know the internet and was just searching out different groups that actually had were based on truth, right? Foundationally, uh, they were they were actually rooted within what I believe is truth, the, the Bible, and I didn't find it, I didn't see it, and so uh, just through that started to kind of raise my hand a little bit and say, hey, does anybody else desire this or have a a, a hunger for yes, a business community? Um, but also just that is is rooted within biblical principles, and so uh, out of that feeling of unfulfillment, man, we we just we started we started talking, started raising our hand, and uh, ultimately that's what has led into now what we call the King's Council. And just to be clear, Jesus is King, and we are sitting on that council. Um, and there you go. Yes, Love it. yes, sir. Anything else, Christian? Did I miss on that? Yeah. So we started about three years ago, and again, this is Riley's uh, brainchild where um, it, it's been a cool spot that I've been because I, I came into Riley's life three years ago when King's Council came to be, and God had just really given, given him a hold of his heart. Yeah. And I would probably say to you, Riley, that you would have maybe even identified as entrepreneur first, Christian second. Oh, yes. But then Jesus came in, got a hold of your heart. Been and, there, yeah. Yeah, and then I, I was able to witness the transition from you having this, like, uh, recommitment to the Lord, putting him first, making him Lord of your life, not just declaring him as savior. And then see over these past three years, I mean, we're coming up in October, it'll be three years that we've been in existence. Uh, but we That's just great. recently in the last month switched completely to nonprofit. So all money that comes in just wow. gets funneled through us and back out uh, because it's, th this is more a ministry. 
and I I came about uh, <laughs> in this uh, King's Council journey was I, I was a guy who I wasn't an entrepreneur at the time. Um, I had given my life to the Lord at 30, got radical, radically transformed, uh, delivered from a 14 year drug addiction, um, married the woman who led me to the Lord. I became a father of her four beautiful kids. And now here I am, I'm like, uh Oh, I, I, I was managing a blue collar job at the time. And I was like, I don't know what to do. I know this isn't my life's calling, but what, what can I do? Um, so I saw this thing pop up, Riley Meek popped up on my, uh, on my social media, I'm like, what the heck is this? They did an online challenge uh, for people interested in getting into business. I knew the Lord was telling me to be a part of it. I did. I paid 2,500 bucks to uh, uh, for what was it, 90 day coaching program. And Graham, believe me, I didn't even have the 2,500 bucks at the time. It was uh, like the last 2,500 oh, yeah. I had available on a credit card. My my son was just born. My wife didn't go back to work after he was born, and here I am, I'm like, okay, God, I, I, you're calling me to do this. And what was amazing to me, brother, was to see how many true believers that there are that are out there that want to come together and they want to feel community because a lot of times entrepreneurs, or if you're quote unquote successful in the world's eyes, you're an outcast in church because you may have the bigger house, you may have the, the fancier car. But what I've I've seen with my own eyes over the last three years and my role in King's Council, I, I quickly um, became somewhat of a pastor of the coaching group and uh, my role was spiritual advisor and I started working um, pretty much counseling spiritually all these entrepreneurs who are balling. So I was learning from them. I was learning the business world. Uh, I was pouring into them spiritually. And what I found was these guys and, and some women who are a part of it as well, they're some of the most generous people I've ever met in my life, yet they get shunned in their yeah. own churches because they they have a car that costs a little more than a typical Christian. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, man. And Yeah. And go, go ahead, Riley. I was, I was Finish gonna, it up. Put, I got a lot of thoughts, but, but cool. go ahead. Go ahead. So put a bow on that. Um, the ultimate like vision that we have for the King's Council is to be the provision for uh, those God-given visions that mm -hmm. us individually, um, but really I just think for the church as a whole. So – uh, if if we really boiled this thing down, like what the King's Council is about is we disciple entrepreneurs, right? We disciple them uh, because being a part of a coaching group or other masterminds, like we no question we can help people uh, systemize their business uh, and, and increase revenue. But I have zero desire to do that anymore unless foundationally uh, it, they're, they're locked and loaded as far as you know, not just financially, but within their home life, their family life. They, they actually know the Lord, uh, because I really know, or I really believe that what's happening in, in America and really all over the world is just this shift of, of a, a, a large financial shift that is happening. And ultimately, I think uh, as believers, as, as Christians, we should be the most influential people on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. But why aren't we? Right? Why aren't we? And, and ultimately, that's what I meant when I say we disciple entrepreneurs to um, yes, go make more money, absolutely, but we're doing it uh, with one focus in mind, and that is to be the provision uh, for the church. And, uh, and yeah. with that, we've got incredible programs that we, we walk people through um, from being a wantrepreneur to an entrepreneur to seven, eight, nine-figure earners to ultimately deploy those funds to, uh, to really, truly make a lasting change and impact here on this earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. And, and we'll get into like the specifics of the program and how people can get involved and things like that. But I want to unpack a lot of stuff there. So so first and foremost, I, I have always believed that there's this very close parallel between uh, any entrepreneur has to have faith that gut belief, right? Like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping off this cliff, man. And we're going to see, we're going to see what happens. And, and to me, it's so interesting how there's such a parallel between that and, and, and faith in the Lord at the same time, right? And so it's always easy to believe in God when you're broke. And then the thing that seems to happen to a lot of Christian entrepreneurs is they, they, they take their leap, they become successful, and then they become less dependent on God and more dependent on the money that they're making. And, and one thing that I've noticed, and Riley, I, I, I've, I've heard you, I've listened to your video, so I'm, I'm going to direct this one your way. 
is because I was this entrepreneur. I was the guy, man, I've got a high school diploma from Mississippi and you know, that's probably not even worth the same as, you know, most people's high school diplomas. And, um, you know, here I was all of a sudden I'm a, I'm a multiple business owner and I've got employees and I've got this and I've got that. And the most successful I've ever been, I found myself the most lonely, the most depressed, the most unfulfilled that I've ever felt in my entire life. Um, Riley, why do you think that, because this is a, this is a really big issue with entrepreneurs and people that are successful is they feel very much alone and on an Island by themselves. Um, why do you, why do you believe that is? Yeah, well, in entrepreneurship, first off, let's, if we even think about like the root word of it, uh, it's a French word in entreprendre, entreprendre. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on pardon my French, Graham, but yeah. um, it's but, kind of, sounded good to me. It sounded a little good. bit of a, a span like Spanish <laughs> accent there, but you know, but yeah. <laughs> um, but it, all it actually means is to undertake, and so that's why I really believe all of us as as uh, human beings we're entrepreneurs to to some extent. If you're a stay at home mom, if you're a freaking rodeo clown, uh, whatever it is, if you're undertaking that task at hand, it's a mindset, right? So when we we have that mindset. Uh, and it's the, you know, the, what a lot of entrepreneurs actually long for. It's just that thrill of the hunt, right? It's just like, and that's what it was for yeah. me. Um, and I realized uh, as I would check the box or make certain accomplishments, I realized that as, as I progressed financially, even that money actually, money's a great magnifier, right? And it, and it, it exposes things in our, in our life. And it really only truly makes us more of who we already are. And when I started to make a decent amount of it, I realized, man, that I just, I was not that great of a dude. Uh, and thank God that uh, he never actually took his hand off of me and allowed me to actually grow through that. And I think the biggest realization, you mentioned being lonely. It, it, it's, I know this is a, you know, a saying that maybe gets used up often, but it's, it's only lonely at the top if you don't take anyone with you, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's just the important right. aspect of community um, and why, as entrepreneurs, we, we think like if it's if it's to be, it's up to me, right? And and we're gonna grind, we're gonna hustle. Yeah. I used to pride myself on that, like I'm gonna be the the hardest worker in the room, and I think that yeah, that nobody's gonna outwork me. Ex da, 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 da. Exactly, and I think that that gets you, that can definitely get you far. Um, but one thing that I've that I've really realized is that if if you want to go uh, fast, go alone. Right. But if, if you want to truly go far, you got to go together and you got to bring people with you. And I think that's just the biggest component um, of what or the community component of what we've built here within the King's Council. Uh, it's just and we need community. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're yes. solo uh, r running this race, trying to do it, it alone, it ain't going to end well. Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> I've seen it over and over in firsthand have been a part of it over and over again of just like maybe some some quick successes or quick wins, but that lasting fruit that, that everybody I think is looking for within their business, within their home life. It's just that important aspect of actually community, which it's, I mean, that's, the, that's the church, right. right? That's like the body of Christ of, of if we actually took that concept or understood how to run our businesses with that, that mindset, like, wow, we could actually do some pretty epic things here. Mm. Yeah, no, I like that. And I think that's going to shift me back over to you, Christian, because you were talking about um, you were talking about people that think outside of the box, whether you are a person that wants to start your own business or you just started your own business or you've been an entrepreneur for a long time. What ends up happening is uh, I've heard you guys talk about the poverty mindset within the church and things like that. But there's also I'm going to add to it. I'm also going to say there's also a beggar's mindset within the church. And so if somebody is thinking differently or somebody uh, is uh, successful within the church, I mean, people are basically just walking around like this with their hands out and, and, and they want that person not to only tithe to the church, but Hey, I need this help or Hey, I need that help and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes being good stewards of what God has given us is you can't give every dollar that you make to everybody who needs help at the time or everybody who wants help. You see it all the time. Um, college athletes that become professionals that are broke within five years after they made $80 million in a year because they don't, they don't have the people around them 
the community around them that is of the same mindset to breathe and speak life and discipleship into them where they need uh, breath and life and discipleship. So Christian, back to you. Why do you think there is such a poverty mindset or as I said, a beggar's mentality mindset within the church? And, and, and why is it so important that we need to create this community for Christian entrepreneurs uh, in this entrepreneurial space? Sure. Yeah. Well, what's funny, Graham, is Riley actually, the first conversation we had told me that I had a poverty mindset and I didn't even realize that I did. I, you know, I, once I got saved, I jumped into church, into scripture, uh, had been doing ministry for a good number of years once I met Riley and I, I would point out poverty mindset within the church, but I didn't realize I had it because in my mind, I said to Riley, I said, I'm doing ministry full time, but I'm getting paid zero. I'm working my butt off to provide for my family. I said, all I'm praying for is that God could provide a job for me, a ministry job where I just have enough to pay the bills. I, I have enough. I, if I have to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I'll be content with that. Yeah. You know, I, if I really work hard, maybe we could take a family vacation. And Riley looks at me, he goes, bro, that's the most selfish thing I ever heard in my life. I'm like, what? <laughs> he said, if, if you only have enough to provide for yourself, what about your neighbor? What about others? Yeah. And immediately it was just like, you know, my mind just exploded. And that self-limiting belief, that poverty mindset, that ceiling I put on my own life was gone. It just, it just blew off in that moment. And what I would come to find with Riley is, um, you know, the parable of the Good Samaritan guy gets beaten up on the side of the road and he gets passed by by the Levite, by the priest. And this Samaritan comes and he, he, he gets him up, he, you know, shakes the dust off. And, you know, he was left for dead on the side of the road. And he anoints him with oil, brings him to the inn, and, and he pays for him to be taken care of. And when Riley shared, I had read the Good Samaritan plenty of times, but when Riley said he actually identifies as that Good Samaritan, we all should because at the end of it, Jesus says, you know, who showed mercy? It was the Good Samaritan. Now go and do likewise. It's not just care for them, but what did the Samaritan have? He had the provision. He had the finances yeah. to take care of this gentleman. Do it. So not only did he say, hey, uh, took him to the inn, hey, fix him up, get him healthy. But whatever expenses, uh, when I come back, I'll pay. And I love Riley. He said, this dude's probably an entrepreneur. He's going out to a business meeting. This dude's he's, an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's passing through. Right. <laughs> so when I, when I hear that, I'm like, okay. So what the church does is they, they think that it's humble to be broke. It's humble to have nothing. Yeah. And I guess I get it. We're to be content with all that we have. Right. But we're not to settle. Uh, so many times the church settles for average or just good enough. Well, God created us for excellence. Why am I settling when God said that, hey, what he could provide for us will absolutely blow our minds. And, and just the scripture references uh, of when we give, how much we receive, the, the law of sowing and reaping. If, if we sow sparingly, we're going to reap sparingly. If we sow abundantly, we're going uh, to reap abundantly. Yeah. So, But we need something to have in our hand and then be willing to give it. So, so that, that yeah. mindset is, okay. The, the Christians, they struggle with two things. One, if they don't have, they're like, okay, th this is noble and humble to be broke and in poverty. And then the other thing is, oh, once I get my hand on something, I'm not going to give it away because they, yeah. they have that mindset. Or, or a lot of will say, well, when, I'm, when I have money, then I will be generous. And that's not, I mean, we can talk about multiple scripture re references of. Yeah, if of, you're not generous with the little you got, you're not going to be gener generous with big stuff. Exactly. And I think the biggest thing, the aha moment for me, uh, or, or just even reading that uh, parable of the Good Samaritan again, because I'd read it multiple times. And this is how I just love and know that scripture is the living, breathing word of God, because it, it, it can, you can pull different things out of it based mm -hmm. upon what's going on in your life at that time. And God knew exactly what I needed to hear and read then, because for me, it was like, permission to go create wealth that was the biggest thing because yeah. you know i grew up in south dakota like everybody's you know a christian supposedly right but the the, the <laughs> real ones the real ones that i saw were broke broken and defeated and i was like i don't want any of that so that was my my upbringing yeah. that was my understanding and when i realized man to be that type of christian that that jesus calls us to be when he said 
which one showed mercy? And then Luke 10, 37 says, go and do likewise. And mm -hmm. I, that was like that bomb that went off in my brain. I was like, oh my gosh, it is incredibly expensive to be that type of Christian. And, but it, that, that was like the freeing moment to me of like, okay, I, I now have permission to do that, or I can do that and still live this sold out lifestyle for, for Jesus, not just as savior yeah, yeah. of my life, but actually true Lord of my life. And, mm -hmm. and that's been this radical transformation uh, for me over the past four years. Uh, and ultimately what, what I, I know we're building this movement here with kingdom minded entrepreneurs that, that know they have that gifting and that calling on their life to create wealth to actually be that provision for the, the God-given visions that we all have. Mm. I agree. I agree. So, so I want to get into a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, meat here. Let's preach for a minute. Let's talk. So, um, and, and I believe this is going to lead into, you know, the, uh, towards the end, you know, telling everybody how they can be involved and what levels and blah, blah, blah. Cause there's a lot of people listening to this, Riley, me and you have talked about this Christian, me and you have talked about this. I, 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 if I ever write an entrepreneurial book one day, I, I will use this. And I truly believe that most people are about 20 grand away from doing or stepping out to do what they really think that they're supposed to go do. Like, like most people are about 20 grand that won't literally like completely deteriorate their lives away from opening up that, that their own barbershop. They're the top barber in the barbershop. They work for somebody else and they know they need to start their own shop, but they don't have 20 grand like to get all this stuff going. Um, I want to talk to you guys about this because what you guys are talking about is actual counterculture in the church. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, um, hang on three, two, walk by. Yeah. You're, you're good. Zach's got to, Zach's got to go, uh, out. All right. So three, two, what we're talking about here is actually counterculture to what's taught in churches. All right. And this is, I'm not going to attack Dave Ramsey on the show but I don't agree with everything Dave, Dave Ramsey does. The only person that doesn't listen to Dave Ramsey's teaching is Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey doesn't operate the way Dave Ramsey tells everybody else to operate. And, and there is innate risk. There is innate things that you have to do if you feel like you want to become a business owner and things like that. I, I, people ask me all the time, well, how'd you get started? How'd you get going? Well, I had an idea. Um, I tanked my credit because it was either pay this bill or pay the employees so we could keep the business going long enough for the business to become profitable. Uh, I spelled credit, you know, C-A-S-H, cash. That's how I spelled it for many, many, many years. Um, and when you tell people that, they're like, oh, well, that's not, that's not biblical. We shouldn't do things that way. Like, like, you know, if we're supposed to, you know, do this, then the Lord's just going to provide a million dollars for us, and then we're going to be able to go out there and do this. That's not how it works. And so what we're talking about is counterculture stuff here. We're talking about the fact of you do have to take risk. And and the pursuit of money is not bad. The love of money is bad. Um, yes, we should be content if we have nothing because we have the Lord, we have our family, we have, we have our health. But that's that's like if there's no other option, we should be content with what what we have. There's nothing bad about no I want to go make 10 figures a year so I can be super generous to other people. Me and my family don't have to live paycheck to paycheck and I'm able to bless other people. Why do you guys believe this is such a counterculture argument? Cause there's a lot of people listening right now that want to start their own business, but in their church life, they, they, they feel almost some sense of shame, right? Well, we're supposed to be content. Should I really go out there and try to do this? Because that doesn't seem very biblical. Why do you think that is? Oh, man, I could talk for days on this, Graham. So you're going to have to butt <laughs> in. Because uh, th this is what I really geek out to, man. Because I think the, the enemy has done an incredible job at warping the minds of believers, mm -hmm. right? And, and he hear me on this. Like you mentioned the Dave Ramsey you know, Dave, if you're in debt and you need help to get out of debt, great. Use his principles. But last I read, we serve a God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills, mm -hmm. right? And in Matthew 6, 633 specifically, if I'm supposed to to uh, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else then is going to get be given or done unto me, the whole 33 verses prior to that, 32 verses prior to that, they're talking about provision, right? Mm -hmm. it's just, that's essentially what we're talking about. And so you mentioned even 
um, you know, the, the love of money, the pursuit of it's not a bad thing if you're not in love with it. Because if you even think of of what it means to be in love with something, like, uh, I mean, when I found out, you know, I met Ash and I was like, all right, I love this girl. What did I do? I thought yeah. about her all the time. I pursued yep. her. I, 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 I like, there was... I, I did everything that I could to be around her because she was consuming my thoughts, right? That's the love. Yeah. Your, my life revolves around, yeah, yes. Alyssa. Like she is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, I think it, 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 understanding the difference between that. So as with whether it's poverty gospel or prosperity gospel, there's extremes with anything, but I just want to, I want to live my life right. based upon the gospel, right? And I can't truncate scriptures or pull things out and, and I think this is what, again, the, the enemy has done in, in warping the minds of a lot of believers is using scripture, twisting it to make us feel one way or the other that's going to fit our agenda versus actually uh, us fitting God's agenda on this thing. And so it comes back to the mindset. And I think, I mean, most all of this, even from an entrepreneur perspective, this all started during the Industrial Revolution. And this is like, if you think about culture and society and what's happened over the last 150 years, the mindsets that we have now started this indoctrination of go to school, get a, you know, get a job, uh, go to call, you know, go to college, go into debt to get a job. Like that doesn't even logically, if you actually think about that, that is idiotic mm -hmm. right now. There are certain you things debt to get a job that can never can pay, off pay off the debt, debt yeah. right? It's like you are a slave and, and actually if you look at scripture, and I don't see an employee in there at all, right? There's not a concept <laughs> of an employee throughout scripture, right? There's, there's masters, there's slaves, there's servants, and then there were laborers. Like Paul's a tent maker, right? The guy actually, I bet yeah, he yeah. crushed selling tents because he had to provide, right? He, and and yeah, he was yeah. doing that to fund his ministry. You know, it's not like he didn't just come he completely shut down his tent making business. No, we know that he was a tent maker and that's how he actually provided for him to go spread the gospel and, and do what he needed to do. Um, and so back to just this, this indoctrination, man, in 1913, I believe this was the date on this. In 1913, 97% of Americans were entrepreneurs. And three, yeah, only three, three percent absolutely. were actually employees. Yep. And today it's completely inverse. It's completely inverse because we've been taught and told. Because if you if you even think of the school system today, it is literally. Ooh, ooh you're fixing to go down my my <laughs> mind. You're trying to get me riled up now. I was just fixing to go ahead. I was Good. just fixing to say this. Go. Oh, I'll tee it up, man. You 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 hit it out then. Um, okay. But the school system, it's like you think about it. You go to you have to show up on time, right? Which great, we we're supposed to do that. But you get a a 15 minute recess break, right? Our water break. Uh, at when we correlate this to actually being an employee, uh, you get a lunch break, right? You get an afternoon break, and then you you go home for the rest of the day, right? And and it's just like they've built in this model of this is how life is supposed to be, and I don't see or read that anywhere throughout Scripture. Culture and society has taught us this, and we've just come to accept it. And it's like, well, that's just what I'm supposed to do, and and that's where. From an entrepreneur perspective, man, what if what if believers actually had a business in place that that was bringing in revenue that freed them up, so they weren't actually a slave to their employer, uh, where, that they could actually go do incredible things, like do things that like Paul did. He traveled around, he preached the gospel, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think back to just money. I mean, we know that we we cannot serve both God and money, or proper actual translation would be mammon, like the spirit of money, the power that it has over us. Mm. And this, I think, is, yeah. has, has completely overtaken people here in America that are, that are just enslaved to this, well, I've got to get a good job. I've got to go to work. I've got to be reliant on somebody else. And, and we've even, they've even been taught and told that, okay, this is, that's a safe way to go about it. And at the end of the day, if anybody else has control over my provision for my family that's the riskiest thing mm. possible and so it's just a, a mindset shift from entrepreneurship isn't risky it's i mean you got to have faith right absolutely and you have to be willing to take risks but what's risky is relying on somebody else to pay me an hourly wage to go to to go to work because yeah. 
they can end that immediately. Mm -hmm. And you better believe it's going to happen, continually going to happen here within this recession that we're, we're, we're in the midst of right now, man. And so for an entrepreneur or if you're, for anybody that's like wants to be an entrepreneur, look at it. It ain't that hard. I freaking figured it out. It ain't that hard. <laughs> and you're from South Dakota. And I'm from South Dakota. If I, if I can figure it out, right? anybody right? can figure it. Out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back to the back, back to the point there. And Christian, I really feel like you're gonna get, you're gonna pick up on this where I'm gonna go with this. So the school thing. I am I am so anti school. <laughs> it is not funny. That you know curriculum that they've taken out. They've taken out how to balance checkbooks. Uh, that they've taken out. You know they would rather teach you calculus than to teach you okay what's the 30 percent roi on your investment like what does that mean you know what i mean like mm -hmm. like things people actually use you know i'm not going to be a chemist you know however i am going to have a bank account like those are things that are real i 100 and i and i hate to use gary v on on a <laughs> on this thing but but one thing gary v says that i love so much is that the school system is the one thing that has not adapted outside of wokeism and gender ideology in the past 50 years. And school is designed not for leaders, it's designed for workers. That's what school is designed for. Sit here, why? Because you have to. Well, I have enough credits to graduate already. Why do I have to be here this whole entire year? Well, because the state says you have to. So you have to sit here and be bored the entire time and not do anything. It is absolutely ridiculous. I think you guys are on to something here. And Christian, this is I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Sure. I think you guys are on to not only current entrepreneurs, but but as 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 fathers and mothers in the entrepreneurial space, we can change the direction of an entire new generation because as you've said, what, what it is right now is people just assume, okay, I go to college, you know, I party for the first year and a half. And then, you know, I change my major three or four times. And then I leave with a, you know, not to, not to pick on my wife. I leave with a social work uh, degree. And, and even though I'm the highest level social work ever, I've got this much debt. And even though I'm the highest level, I can make 50 grand a year before taxes. And, and, and it's this, this perpetual cycle and you're dependent on a job and you're dependent on living underneath the rules of that job that tells you what you can do, when you can do it, what you can wear, what you can say, etc. In today's world, we've talked about this evil is on the rise. We need strong Christian leaders that in my opinion, entrepreneurial leaders, because if we are self-sufficient and we're not reliant on other people's jobs, then we're worried about losing our job by standing up for what we need to stand up for and standing up for the word of God and the truth, then, then if we can't do those things, then we're useless. Like we can't do anything. If somebody is radically going against the Bible, against Jesus, against Christianity, and we're, we have put ourselves in a position to where Riley, as you said, we are slaves to a business that we work for, not that we own, then we, we, we are unable to take the stands that we need to take. And like you said, there's very few uh, non-provisional uh, people in the Bible. There's very few people that don't have the means to pull off uh, what, what God needs them to pull off and or God provides for them to be able to pull off. And I think you guys are on to a couple of things. One, you're empowering current entrepreneurs not to be slaves to the system and to be generous to the kingdom. Ooh, that felt that like a good, there. that's anyway, good, man. Um, and then two, you guys are onto something because these new entrepreneurial people can then go to their children and go, you don't have to do it this way. You want to have a, a, a grilled cheese food truck and drive it around and then own 30 of them when by the time, you're, sure, you can absolutely do those things. There are better ways to do it because, because, as Riley put out, there has been this slavery mindset and mentality. And the one thing that I love about you guys, the one thing I love about the atmosphere here is everybody believes, why can't we do those things? Why can't we do that? Why, what, why can't the Lord provide the opportunity for us to be able to go out there and do this, which allows us to be more generous? And I just think that you guys are not only breaking current curses, but g future generational curses as well. Amen. Yes. Amen. I love that. Graham, so... As I said before, I was a blue collar guy. I just stepped into the world of entrepreneurship at the age of 39. I'm 42 now, so I'm new. But 
what I realized and when I, I got in rooms with guys that I looked at and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I shouldn't even be in this room with what these guys have on their resume. What I realized is it ain't that hard. Right. It ain't that hard. It's just that I grew up, my father was a cop. So I, I knew nothing about entrepreneurship and I was an athlete in high yep. school. The plan was to be an athlete in college and follow in his footsteps, become a cop. And then you have this magic number in your mind of what a good number to make per year would be to take care of a family. And then you work, you know, for a cop civil service, 25 years, you retire, then you get another job now. Oh, you got a pension and that, but then you have another income on top of it. And what yep. I, what I realized, and, and now I, uh, Graham, I'm so blessed uh, where I am now, where I have equity in a couple different companies right now, multiple streams of income right now. The stuff that my kids are seeing, now my older kids, I, I was teaching them the same stuff that I, I knew. And even though I didn't want to go to college, I don't like the idea of college, and none of my kids liked the idea of college. I was like, okay, uh, I guess you go to college and look for a job. If you're not doing ministry, yeah. ministry is kind of an out. Right, because yeah. like now I'll just step into the, the the world of ministry and really be broke my whole life. <laughs> uh, but it's just what when you look at how much the church should be doing right now, Graham. Uh, multiple surveys it, 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 and different statistics will show that the church going a regular church going Christian right now tithes two and a half percent, which is not a tithe, which is not mm -hmm. even a tithe. Right. It's and, not a yeah. and only 10 to 25 percent of church going Christians actually tithe. Mm -hmm. it, so and again, the tithe is not a tithe. It's two and a half percent. So the and they tithe. And, and I would go further and say they tithe uh, not gross. They tithe after after right. <laughs> after expenses and things like that. Right. Yeah. I know how many times I, I've been asked, hey, is that before taxes or after taxes? Well, guess yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, My, yeah. I, I, I've been over finances at multiple churches. You're not going to give 10% either way. <laughs> so right. so <laughs> whatever God lays on your heart there, brother. Right. 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 Uh, but uh, man, the work, when you look at the world around us, right. And, and you, you see, you see what's going on. You see evil, man. I, I'm grateful for guys like you, where you're a mouthpiece for for the people. And I, I mean, yeah. like, I want to say just normal people, but you right. know, like, I I feel like there's nothing uh, tremendously radical about what you say. I think uh, everything you nothing say. Nothing too smart about what you say, Graham. It's just you know, <laughs> for for a country boy from Mississippi, you're doing all right. Nah, um, <laughs> but. I mean, you're a, you're a mouthpiece. Did, I, did did he mention that he was originally hired on as a spiritual advisor to really build people up? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How am hey, I doing? We all need a good dose of humbling from time to time. I tell everybody all the time, I have no idea why people listen to what I have to say. I, pff, the least educated person in in this building, much less uh, much less between you guys. All right, but what I'm saying is, I get encouraged when I'm around the people that are making a difference. Right, because a lot of times we wake up and we feel like the enemy's winning. We do. I, it's just the, the the world we're living in today. It's like, oh my gosh, no, we need to band together, and the the kingdom of God needs to go forth. There's people out there who need to hear the gospel, who are stuck in addiction, who are who who need to be freed from freaking demons. There there's kids out there being hurt, being sex trafficked. There's people out there without sanitary water that without homes there, there's stuff that if we actually if every church going american christian actually tithe we'd have enough money to actually fund uh you know all all this, all this. Yeah. we'd be able to put an end to freaking world hunger if we did this that's why when you know pastors like when we speak to their churches because we will talk about the tithe we will talk about the importance yeah. of it and our job that they do love it when you talk about that. Right. They don't want to talk about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you get, you get in here. You... A little bit. Of course you do. Yeah. Get in there and tell them. <laughs> right. But our, our heart with King's council is to um, promote and, and initiate radical generosity, yeah. radical yeah. generosity where, and I I've, I've seen it with, with Riley be radical. He's generous. I've seen him be radically generous and, know what happens is it turns out the Bible's true. You know, Proverbs three yeah. nine, it says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. 
So with the first fruits of all your increase. So it's kind of implying that there's going to be, if we're giving to the Lord, if we're generous, there's going to be an increase. If we continue to give him just a cut off the top, a cut off the top, he's going to continue to provide and provide. And there's going to be increase in the increase. Then the next verse says that so that your barns will be filled with plenty and that your vats will overflow with new wine. Mm. It, it's just, I, I've never heard a, a, a story of somebody radically giving doing doing for the lord doing work for the lord and like man i regret that wow. i regret when yeah. I, I when I, I i felt the and i anybody who's listening to this i i challenge you give to the point where it's uncomfortable it, it you know yep. if you're given 10 next next week at church give something that's uncomfortable where you have to depend on faith you have to depend on god to provide do it and see what yep. he does do yeah. it Yep. I love that. I love that. And I love living in that space. I, and I think, I think Christians like that have seen it, like once you've seen it once, it, it's hard not to want to live in that space more. Like, like there's been times, there's been times we got, you know, like, like we got some new hires here that there's some times where you sit there and go, Ooh, you know, can I really make that budget work? You know, and things like that, because I believe the same thing. I believe in, in, in giving people the opportunity to make their wildest dreams come true financially, right? Like if they put the work in, if they do this, like like I don't believe it capping people here. No matter how good you are, this is where you live. And 98% of the revenue goes to me because I own it and da-da-da-da-da. I, I don't believe in any of that stuff. But there's been times I'm like, whew, Lord, okay, are you sure? Like overhead, you know, uh, payroll and things like that. And, and every time that I have sought after the Lord, even if in the moment it looked like, oh my gosh, that was the biggest mistake of my life, like to go down there, thank goodness, or do or or to go into business with that person, or sign that deal, or take on that sponsor. Every time I've sought the Lord about it, something has come out of it on the back end that I didn't even realize uh, it, it would come out. Like like even meeting you, Riley. Like 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 you know, we met a couple times in Texas. And now I find out you've got this amazing thing that you're doing. And now I have community in this entrepreneurial world that I've never, ever had before. Like, and it was just happenstance meeting in Texas, me and you and, uh, Christian, same thing, you as well. Like, Hey, I'm in Texas for a little bit. Let's see what happens. And then boom, I meet you guys. All that to say, the reason I wanted to have this conversation a little bit this way is I wanted people to know that outside of entrepreneurial advice, you guys have these conversations with people in Kane's Council as well. You have discipleship. You have you have uh, weekly Bible studies. You have all these things to where it's not just a, hey, this is how you forex your income over the next 18 months. Hey, this is how you do email segmentations to get that other 20% that's not open in there. It's not that, like mastermind classes and stuff. You guys are offering a community that is fundamentally engaged in uh, Christians being prosperous and, and being in prosperity so they can be extremely generous, giving back into the kingdom of God for further growth of future entrepreneurs. Um, and as we talked about, I believe the future generations as well. So now let's get into how do people be a part of this and who can do it What's the lowest level that you guys will take in to do this? Are there tier levels? Are there this? Are there that? How does this whole thing work? Yeah, we've got a few different um, programs, Graham, and I think it's it's really based upon where a, an individual is at, right? Are, do they have a business set up already, uh, or are they just starting from scratch? And so, uh, you know, we do have very uh, strategic paths for people, as you mentioned, like to increase their ROI, to put email things in place. We absolutely, that is a part of it. Um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. But the, the biggest thing for us, as I even said earlier, it's like I have zero desire to help somebody grow financially if they're not willing to grow personally as well. And, and yeah. that's just the discipleship component of this. And mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, we have a, a we have dis what we call discover, develop, and deploy three basic phases that that an individual go, can go through either from hey i want to be I'm, I'm an employee right now but you know what you guys are saying is intriguing like could i be an entrepreneur do you want to you want to go from entrepreneur to actual entrepreneur we have a, a path to walk and follow 
very, very simple step-by-step -step programs of how to even set up an LLC, how to, how to create a business plan, how to actually put some structure and order into our lives. Uh, and, and then, that, so that would be our discover phase. Develop is for those that are doing, you know, you've probably been in business, you're doing six figures up to seven figures, a hundred grand to, you know, up to a million dollars in revenue, a very specific path for that group as well, because they need different things that the the entrepreneurs need right? right and so we want yeah. to be able to serve each person individually mm -hmm. um, but also to build relationships uh, and also as you as we learn as what true discipleship should be uh, those that are in the develop phase are, are able to pour into those that are just starting out mm -hmm. uh, and and once you've hit that seven figure mark uh, then we uh, essentially would graduate this person into what we call deploy um, and this is going to be real hands-on working together uh, on, on how to truly scale your business. Um, we've I've, I've taken uh, eight separate companies to seven and eight figures within the first 10 months of every single one of those. And so we know how to grow really quickly, uh, but it's so important to, to have those systems and those processes in place to ultimately uh, have a lasting uh, revenue, have, have, have a systemized business so the business doesn't own you. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually are, are able to own the business to step out and then ultimately do, again, back to the, the God-given calling on your life. Well, what does that look like? Um, is it to, to just be financially generous or is it to actually have a business in place so you, you have the time to be able to go do ministry or uh, you know take those missions trips or whatever that, that actually is? But I think the coolest thing, Graham, as I mentioned, discover, develop, deploy. Every single dollar that comes into this, it ain't going in my pocket. I, we have other businesses set up. That's that's the um, the point of this community is like we want to increase the tithe for for churches, right? But to ultimately uh, create this mindset of radical generosity. So all of the money that's coming into this nonprofit is being deployed to some freaking epic organizations, man. I know we've talked a little bit about. Um, at like firsthand going in and rescuing kids um, and just uh, being able to actually make an impact, right? There's one thing to cut a check, but to actually be in the know and understand where what we're actually doing, that's the point of this community, specifically for those that are in the deploy group. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, it's, it's just been, uh, uh, it's been fun to grow this community. We, uh, you mentioned we have weekly Bible studies. We have, we have uh, weekly coaching calls as, as groups. Um, and then those uh, that are in the deploy actually have one-on-one -on -one actual coaching with us as well. Yeah. Um, so joinkingscouncil.com is where you could join the community. And like, like Graham, you mentioned, Riley mentioned, we do have the weekly Bible studies. We, we have a community that, that's there for free. And, and there's resources for that anybody could grab hold of. And then we do have those three coaching programs. And don't worry, if you're the, the, the newbie like I was, uh, three years ago, it's not twenty five hundred dollars for ninety days. It's literally ninety seven bucks a month. Uh, if yeah. you're a newbie, we we make it extremely affordable. Uh, and just think of this: the idea of you're you're helping to fund kingdom advancement. You're you're not. I mean, it's well worth the money for what you're gonna gain and attain, yep. and how your life is gonna change if you truly desire this entrepreneurial route. But to know uh, that you are actually um, you know, in the spirit realm that we are taking territory with that money. And, and at in Philippians, I, I love this. And I feel like that God's been putting this on my heart because this is, this is what we're doing. You know, he gives thanks to the church of Philippi. Paul gives church, uh, thanks to the church for, for all the giving that they did. They gave multiple times. They said, when I left Macedonia, when I left you guys, you were the only church to, to help me out financially. He said, when I was in Thessalonica, you guys two times sent me money just to take care of my basic needs. He said in verse 17, he says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. What does that mean? He said, I'm not, I, I don't just desire the, the money that, that you're donating to me. He said, what I'm desiring, what I can't wait to see is that scorecard that God has in heaven where you're getting tallies next to your name because you help fund this mission and who better to fund than Paul in all of Christian history, right? Uh, the, if I'm going to fund, if I, if I'm getting credit in heaven for helping somebody's ministry, that's the guy I'm going to, I'm going to help fund. Right? So he's saying, I look yeah. forward to, to seeing the fruit that abounds to your account because you help fund me financially. And so you could rest assured that it, 
because we have guys that have for when we were for profit when this was a coaching company we've had people say hey can i just tithe to you we we love what you're doing and and you know after praying and god led us down this route to make it complete nonprofit, if you just want to simply give well you're going to be in the loop of what we're actually funding here what we're doing taking a, a territory for the king of kings jesus christ where we're setting people free we're making true impact that'll last eternity yes i love it I love it, guys. I love it. Well, we've got to have you guys on more to talk about this. But one last time, just for everybody, uh, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. If you're just starting out, you can be a part of it. If you've been around the block for a while and you want to take it even further, you can. But most importantly, if you want discipleship, not only on the monetary side, but especially the spiritual side, King's Council is the way to go and something I truly believe you need to check out. And like they said, for as low as 97 bucks a month, uh, I don't drink it, but some of you drink Starbucks twice, three times a day. Knock out one of those cups of that communist coffee, and boom, you're there. Uh, where can they go, guys, to check it out and see uh, how to join up? Yeah, joinkingscouncil.com. Council is C-O-U-N-C-I-L. So joinkingscouncil.com. You can find us on Instagram, uh, Kings Council Community. Uh, follow Riley. Follow myself. Everything we put up there is is this kingdom business right here and also uh, also i just want to throw out there um once you join the community you're going to be getting um some emails from us we're going to have a live in-person event november 11th ah, on veterans right. day right here in our studio in denton texas and none other than graham allen's going to be here with us live and in person i have been told by my scheduler that i will be there for that <laughs> i have been told that i will be there and i'm looking forward to it i i you know uh, yes, I will be there. And so if anything, come sign up and check out the first, uh, the first live event with me being a part of it. And so I'm super excited about that guys, Riley, Christian, love what you guys are doing. Love you as people, uh, love you as fellow Christians, love what you guys are doing. Uh, join kingscouncil.com. Make sure to check that out. That's all we have for this episode of dear America guys. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks so much for listening and we'll see you all again next time.